Hi there! What's up gamers? Dreamcast Guy here and it's Top 10 Thursday. Right as you clicked on this video, I was actually playing a little bit of my Nintendo Switch. I really just can't stop just being totally addicted to this thing. It's got great graphics, big quests, and really just so many games that operate so great as handhelds. So because of it, I'll admit the fact that I'm totally addicted to this device. So today, I wanted to kind of try and honor the games that I've spent the most hundreds of hours playing. These are my picks of the top 10 games I just cannot stop playing on Nintendo Switch. Number 10. Starlink Battle for Atlas. When this game was originally revealed, people weren't exactly sure what to make of it, because on the surface it appears to be just a mix of No Man's Sky and Star Fox, but in actuality, these are concepts that come together relatively fantastic. This is an open world space exploration game where you're going to be landing on planets, fighting different aliens, and just kind of customizing your ship. Now I will say that this is one of those things that just seems like it got me into the zone. Playing it was so nostalgic in a way, because this is sort of what I always dreamed that we would grow up to have a Star Fox like. It's the Nintendo game that's so different and yet so much of what I always wanted, so therefore I just couldn't stop until I'd fully saved every single planet. Number 9. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe I want to start this entry off with just a random fact that might blow your mind, so sit down and brace yourself. This is in fact the highest selling Nintendo Switch game. Total, overall, period, flat out, this has already sold 15 million copies. And in my opinion, there is a great reason behind that, which is that this is a game that feels different. It is a racing game that's just so comical and has so many great options in it. But on top of that, it has 64 freaking tracks. I've played this game so much simply because there's so much variety in it. I can play it in a plane, I can play it in a car, I can play it just while I'm sitting down at home. But no matter what, I'm going to have a blast. Last. One lap, a thousand laps, it's still fun, just like when I first picked it up. Number 8. Skyrim. I've always considered myself a bit of an Elder Scrolls super fan because every one of these games is just so freaking great. Like, down to its very core, there's so much to do. While they end up getting released very, very far apart, I honestly believe that you could play pretty much anything in this series for an entire decade with each game. I mean, just this one, Skyrim specifically, I've beaten it over and over again on the Xbox 360, and then again on the PS3, and again on the PS4, and now on the Switch. I love getting to create my own hero and then to make my own journey within this gorgeous snowy landscape. And the fact that now there's added Nintendo content makes this a deal that is even sweeter. Number 7. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The very best fighting games typically have two main ingredients, which is a giant roster of interesting characters to learn and figure out, and second, of course, proper balancing. You want to make sure your game feels fair and brutal at the same time, and this game, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, has both of those flavors in a massive way. There is seriously so much freaking enjoyment you can get out of this. Every single match is like a different tiny quest to figure out your own way to win or be horribly killed in the process. I've probably played thousands of rounds of this so far, both alone and with friends, just because I really like a good match, and also it just feels so good to be that person to get the final smash and knock somebody clear off the map. Number 6. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 when I look around at gaming today, it just seems like there's never enough truly miraculous action RPGs. Games that have nice leveling and grinding and lots of specialty to it, but they still don't have that spark of originality, which thankfully Xenoblade has. I love the idea of this story taking place on the back of these giants, with a world where scale is so messed up. The idea of being in this world where things are completely broken, but we're still trying to make our own path through it. On top of this, 
this, I found each and every one of the characters so freaking quirky in the best way. I love that everybody has stupid catchphrases in combat. It made it where every time I was playing this game, a lot of times I just wanted to fight and fight and fight to get stronger, to fight that next boss, and eventually try and save the day. And even if I didn't, I'd probably have a great time just seeing more of this really strange and, and quirky new planet. Number 5. Super Mario Odyssey Nintendo's red-headed plumber is arguably one of the most recognizable icons in the entire world because he's just so easy to understand. It's a guy who likes to stomp on Goombas, collect coins, and go on different weird adventures, but this one is definitely his most peculiar. The big twist in Super Mario Odyssey is that he now has a magic hat called Cappy, which lets him possess the body of all sorts of different stuff. Tanks, stretchy caterpillars, and sometimes just something like a different fire hydrant. I mean, everything around you is kind of just a question mark as you try and figure out what possibilities it may hold. You know, I'll just admit, I did not mean to play this so many hours, but the idea of the fact that there were so many hidden moons all over the place in every single one of these levels, it made it where I just kept logging in to try and find that next little secret. I mean, everywhere. I could hunt them here, go there. I mean, it just made it where every single section of this game felt like a different weird journey, and I wanted to just try and find find every piece of it or die trying. Number 4. Splatoon 2 if there's one thing I'm a giant sucker for, it's online multiplayer. The ability to go online and try and crush other people over the internet and get some really sweet wins is something that to me is just endlessly replayable, and this is a game that's completely built around it. The basic concept is just the fact that instead of trying to kill opponents to get points, the overall objective is to just be the person who covers the most amount of territory with their team's paint. Sound easy? Well, it's not, and that's part of the reason I got so completely hooked on this. There's actually a lot of strategy into the type of brush you're using, how you use it, and where you should just go. I like the fact that every single map sort of has its own little tactical weaknesses and strengths, and while this may appear to just be a silly little kids game, it's not. This is a real hardcore shooter for people who are looking for that next evolution of combat. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but that's part of why I just can't put it down. To this day, I still find myself just constantly wanting to hop online into a couple another splats. Number 3. Octopath Traveler over the course of the last couple of years, there's been this little tiny debate within the Final Fantasy community that I found very, very interesting, which is people trying to dig to the bottom of, would classic Final Fantasies from like the Super Nintendo era be as loved today if they were first released? And I've always thought that was really interesting because of Octopath Traveler. So this is a game that is very retro in style and art and music, but is so modern in other technical aspects. The writing is fantastic the ability to create whatever team you want out of all the different characters, and even choose who you want to be the main character to get a very different experience are some very bold choices. But the biggest thing about this is that, at its heart, this is basically a new Final Fantasy, one that's trying its very best to be authentic to the roots of old-school turn-based combat. It manages to grow from the flower pot of all this existing nutrients and suddenly becomes something that so many of us badly needed. The truly stellar thing about this, though, is that it is a hundred hours long and actually gets tougher the deeper into it you go. So truly, the only people who make it to the very, very end and unlock the secret ending are master RPG players. Number 2. Diablo 3. It seems like nowadays there's just not enough great couch co-op experiences. Titles that are specifically built for you and a friend to just pick up a controller and have weeks and weeks worth of fun, but this is one that is really probably the pinnacle of it. Diablo 3 is based around letting you pick your own character, pick your own way to play, and even create your own style of basically kicking butt. And it's still just so freaking good even after thousands of hours in it. I've actually leveled up every 
every character to the pinnacle of their ability, got a bunch of gear, and I still just have so much fun every single time I decide to tap log in. Because fighting into hell, getting new customization options, and really just seeing your teammates actually fight their very best right beside you is such a thrill. It's for this reason that my girlfriend and I actually, this is one of our main things that we love to do together whenever we're really stressed out, is that we'll just sit down, both make a new character, and start trying to beat it again. Maybe on hardcore, maybe on normal, and maybe we're just going to see that eventually we're going to die and we don't really care, because it's the journey that is just so utterly perfect. Number 1. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild a little bit of a controversial statement that I've talked about in the past is that originally when the Nintendo Switch came out, I didn't really like it. It took me a couple months to really warm up to the idea of this thing as a console handheld hybrid, but when it did, it really managed to connect with me. Well, during those early months, I did actually buy this at launch, and so I tried to make sure I could play it from here and there just so I really could finally get a grasp on what it was trying to do, and during those early times, the only game I really owned was Zelda Breath of the Wild, so because of it, I ended up racking up tons amounts of time just trying to get every single shrine, every Korok seed, every upgrade, and in that, I really sort of found my own vibe. This game is really sort of the pathway I took to figure out my own love for the Nintendo Switch. Beating this game required that I master the controller, master a lot of stuff about using this thing in a walking position, using it just all over the place. And and so, it's funny to think about the fact that Zelda Breath of the Wild is probably going to always be considered my very favorite Nintendo Switch game, even though there's so much other good stuff on here, because this is really the game that really cemented my love for this machine, and it's still one of those things that I can actually go back to, even today, start a new file on, and still have a really good experience with. I still have not finished all the DLCs, so even though I already have 160 hours in this game, I'm very likely going to to be putting another 20, 30, or maybe even 50 hours into this just because I want to make sure that I've seen everything before I finally put it down. And for this reason, it is still the clear winner of the Nintendo Switch game I have played by far the most. Did your personal favorite game not make the list? Got an idea for a future top 10? Leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. I seriously do love my Switch a lot. I actually just started a new save file on Lost Sphere just to go through it again because, heck, why not? I could play it anywhere, anytime. I might as well just keep doing everything. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last, or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.